Hi there. I have a question for you. Are some infinities bigger than others? You might have heard or thought about this question before. Maybe it was one of those shower thoughts that you just can't shake off. Take this apple for example. The number of cells in it is finite. The number of molecules or atoms is also finite. So are the number of grains of sand here! What am I coming down to? Well, I want to focus on the word bigger of our original question. We have a term for a size of a set. It's called cardinality. The size of a finite set is defined as the number of elements in it. For example, the size of this set, 5, 7, 4, is 3. But what is the cardinality of an infinite set? I mean, you can't count the elements in it. It will literally take you forever. For now, let's just call this cardinality something. It is common to write the cardinality of the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on, as aleph null. The first Hebrew letter, Aleph, and the small null next to it. Now comes a mathematical definition that tells us if two sets have the same size. Say we have two sets, A and B. We can tell if they have the same size if we can create a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. If we can map every element in A to a single element in B without leaving any un element in B unmapped, then we can conclude that they are of the same size. The groups 1, 2, 3 and 3, 4, 5 have the same cardinality, 3, because we can map every element in A to a single element in B. This is called the 1 to 1 correspondence or bijection. Does the cardinality of the real numbers equal to that of the natural numbers? Real numbers are any number you can think about. Pi, square root of 2, e are all real numbers. Can we create a bijection between the real numbers and the natural numbers? Does a one-to-one -one correspondence exist? Do the real numbers have the same cardinality as the natural ones? The surprising answer is no. Remember how we showed that two groups have the same cardinality or size? We showed a bijection, a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. I'm going to show that no matter what the mapping is, there exists a real number that does not have a natural number that is assigned to it. Let's assume that there exists a mapping between every natural number to every real number. I'm going to contradict. I'm going to show that this cannot happen. This assumption. It cannot exist. Let's write the mapping out. So 1 might map to this number, 2 maps to this number, and so on. Now, we're going to create a new number that no natural number maps to it. Let's look at the first mapping. Take the first digit and change it from 3 to something else, maybe 4. Now, we'll take the second mapping and change the second digit in it. So in this case, we will change 6 to 7. We will keep doing this for every mapping we have. This proof is named after the German mathematician Gregor Cantor. Let's look at the number we created. It goes 4.7273 and so on. It is a real number, but if you look closely, no one maps to it. One doesn't map to it because we know that the first digit of our number is different from the first map number's first digit. The same goes for the second digit, because 6 doesn't equal 7, and so on. In general, the natural number k doesn't map to this number, because the kth digit of our number and the kth digit of the map number are different. This is how we built our number. This number is different from every other map number, so no natural number maps to it. And here we found that our assumption has a flaw. We assume that every real number has a natural number assigned to it, but here's a number that has no natural numbers coming to it. But what did we show? Well, by finding this number that no one is assigned to it, we can conclude that the cardinality of the natural numbers is somewhat smaller than that of the real ones, and we basically proved that some infinities are bigger than others. But what does this mean? What is it all good for? Well, first off, this gives us a fundamental understanding about numbers. To demonstrate, let's say this circle of sand contains all the natural and non-natural numbers. If I were to drop this pin in the sand, it would almost definitely land on a non-natural number. This conclusion is based on the proof we just saw about the real numbers having a larger cardinality than that of the natural numbers. This sounds strange because they're both infinite, yet the real numbers are still somehow bigger than the natural numbers. Cardinality opens up a whole new world in infinite sets. And indeed, some infinities are bigger than others. Thanks for watching.